This is Grow Omaha Uncut, where you can watch our radio show, including what goes on in the commercial breaks. And be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Well, good morning and welcome to the aforementioned Grow Omaha show. Jeff Beals sitting here at your service from NAI NP Dodge Commercial Real Estate Company. We're also brought to you by DM Roofing, Omaha's premier commercial and residential roofing contractor. Well, you will not find another show anywhere in Omaha that talks about the growth and development of your favorite city. So sit back, relax. This is going to be a fun hour. And to get us started, I'm going to bring on my co-host, a man that I affectionately refer to as the legendary real estate deal maker himself, Trenton Maggot. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, good morning to you too. And uh, what a nice weekend this is here Welcome in our to city. Spring. Welcome to spring. It is officially spring. We've had meteorological spring since March 1st, and much of the winter felt like spring, but it's really spring. And thanks to Brad Williams, we've seen the Sandhill Cranes on his website. Oh, did Brad post some Sandhill Cranes oh, yeah. photos? Brad Williams on Facebook and uh, great pictures, and uh, he goes out there every year, I think it's like his 14th year. Uh, last night, uh, we went out with our uh, friends Greg and Lori to the symphony. And, uh, wow, I have- you're cultured. I like to think I like to think of myself that way. Although it's probably been about five or six years since I had been to the symphony. Great show, really, really Holland. good time. Yeah. yeah. So we we went to Hassan Minaj, a, a comedian, about a week ago. And uh, interesting thing, there's a service called, um, uh, oh, it's uh, Yonder. And what they do is he didn't want anybody to have cell phones to take pictures or listening devices and mm-hmm. people playing on their cell phones. So you stand in these huge lines, and they take your cell phone and your your iWatches, whatever they call them, and they put them in these pouches, and they, they lock them up, kind of like at, at those, those security devices you have at, at stores and stuff like that on product, small products. And then they take them off at the end or whatever. But it, it created some big lines. It was kind of a pain in the you-don't-know-what. I don't like that. I don't like, I've heard of that happening in a few different places. I don't like that. I understand why they do it. But uh, it's another hassle. You it's already like have crea- to go through security. Creating a problem. Creating a problem, yeah. Yeah. I will note, like, like last night uh, during the show, you periodically would see someone's phone light up somewhere in the audience, but not very often. And um, so I think that's a bit of an overkill. But yes, I've heard of venues doing that periodically around the country. But I, I can understand how it get, can get disturbing at the symphony or concerts and things like that. And maybe... Uh, there's one less data center because that company exists because of all the storage that <laughs> that we need. Ser- seriously, think about one less wing the millions, of one less data center. Billions of pictures that are taken that nobody ever looks at again. The 15 different shots and it's stored uh, infinitely. Oh yeah, you want a, you want a perfect example of that? Okay, Thursday night, my daughter's eighth grade band concert took place at school. I loved listening to her. Loved seeing her. But there were several parents. That video recorded the entire show. They literally, I mean, it had to, their arms had to hurt holding the, the camera up for the whole entire show. And as much as I love, truly, honestly, watching my kids do anything, what are the odds that They're anyone... They're probably selling NFTs. What are the odds that anyone's going to go in and actually watch those entire videos? Oh, exactly. Of every band concert uh, over the course of a child's... Sell them online. Over your, yeah, it's not going to happen. So there, there you go. That's so a lot of data save a center tree, space. Save a data center. What I recommend is take one or two still shots and then maybe like a 20-second video clip. Call it good, parents. You don't need to record the entire eighth-grade concert. Send it to the grandparents. You're good. But with that, let's go into the news of the week, which is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com. They know mortgages like nobody knows mortgages. Been doing a long time, and they're very customer service focused. And it is officially... As we mentioned just a few moments ago, spring. And spring is a crazy wild time for people going out and hunting for new houses, putting offers in on new houses, and closing on new houses. If that could be you, make sure you stop by Eagle Mortgage right away and get your pre-approval letter. And it doesn't matter whether you're going to use a conventional FHA or VA loan, get a pre-approval letter. Plus, the people at Eagle Mortgage Love to work with people, kind of, you know, coach you through the process a little bit, and uh, you'll be glad you did because they are top notch. You can find them online at eaglemortgagecompany.com or in person at 114th and Davenport. Well, Trenton, this was um, a piece of good news for the local economy. Charles Schwab's workforce in Omaha is now larger 
then TD Ameritrade's workforce when Charles Schwab first announced that merger a couple of years ago. Good thing for Omaha. Employment here remains very, very robust. And get a load of this. Um, according to a World Herald article, uh, Charles Schwab slash TD Ameritrade has 300 open jobs on the market right now in Omaha. So actually, there could be even 300 additional employees. Than that's, what- a, that's awesome. That's, that's a great indication of their commitment to Omaha. Now, have they moved back into their office building, do we know? That's a good question. I have not lurked outside that building. But the one question I do have is when will the TD Ameritrade sign sadly come off and the Charles Schwab sign go on that building? Like the ballpark? Has that happened yet? I don't think it had. When I was downtown a week ago, I the uh, it still said TD Ameritrade. Okay. We saw the renderings, I guess. Yeah, but it's my understanding that that's supposed to be ready for the College World Series, which is only a couple months away. Okay, or maybe what, three, uh, um, April, May, June. Yeah, two and a half, three months away or something like that. How about those Lady uh, Jays basketball team? You know, I I don't watch basketball uh, myself, but how exciting that they made the Elite Eight. That's pretty cool. First time ever. And and they uh, and they've beaten a couple regional teams, Iowa and Iowa State. So that's always kind of interesting when when you are taking on regional rivals like that. Um, but at any rate, um, good news uh, all the way around when it comes to uh, Charles Schwab and TD Ameritrade. Okay, the Moxie by Marriott Hotel. Um, this we've talked about this for a couple of years now. It's been a slow moving construction project, but. It's it's definitely making visible, noticeable progress right now uh, up onto the third floor. This is the um, hotel, very small hotel that will replace. Remember the old market diner? This was the little uh, traditional, you know, 50s style yeah, diner. Yeah, totally. The, uh, the corner would have been, what, 12th and Harney. Harney. Yeah. And so this uh, Moxie by Marriott Hotel is really filling that up. I mean, it's a tight, tight space. And um, I've not stayed at a Moxie by Marriott, but I have walked by a couple of them in other cities and looked by. They look like a cool concept. We should start a pool on what's going to get completed first, the hotel, the Moxie Hotel or the Hacienda Real on, what is that, 72nd, 78th oh. and, and uh, Cass? Hacienda Real, yeah, that is a uh, Mexican restaurant concept out of Lincoln, which I understand is pretty darn good. But that's that's a classic example of a lesson learned. And you know what the lesson is? Don't put up the sign until you're almost ready to open. True. <laughs> what has that sign been up for almost a year? It Seems feels like, like it. it's got to be at least over a half a year since that they they, they put the sign up a little too early. I'm Probably. afraid. Um, but I tell you, it's. You know, it's hard to open restaurants because you're dealing with the the double whammy of supply chain issues and the labor shortage. But and, they still are, seem to be opening. Well, and you know, in, in the business that uh, that uh, NAI NP Dodge operates in, there are a lot of restaurant operators looking for restaurant space. I've got clients that are doing it right now. And if you want restaurant space, who do you call? Trenton Maggot. Trenton, call. And what's that phone number, Trenton? 402 402- Five one zero five two six three. The bat <laughs> that's, phone. That's right. The, the bat phone right there. Um, here's a little piece of good news. Habitat for Humanity. Actually, it's a big piece of good news. Habitat for Humanity of Omaha will receive eleven million dollars in unrestricted gifts from philanthropist Mackenzie Scott. The gift will help families in the metro area become first-time home buyers. That's what Habitat does. Now, beyond that $11 million gift, Habitat Omaha has a $108 million four-year goal that includes, of course, building and renovating more houses, providing mortgage opportunities for families, creating a down payment assistance fund, and um, preserving existing housing stock. Yeah, and kudos to uh, Amanda Brewer, our, our friend and CEO of Habitat for Humanity Local. Uh, they do an amazing job. And so uh, that's uh, Mackenzie Scott is the... Uh, uh, ex-wife of uh, Jeff Bezos from Amazon. So uh, that is a very kind gift. Yeah, big time Amazon money uh, coming into a lot of nonprofits. Uh, Mackenzie Scott, in addition to Omaha's Habitat, donated money to several other uh, local Habitat for Humanities and multiple other nonprofits. She had this big um, list that she released. But yeah, great to have that kind of money coming into a, a good cause here in our city. So if you are a person who uses private aviation, 
um, at Epley, this could have an impact on your life. Signature Aviation um, is has bu- Signature Aviation is buying Tac Air. Now, both Signature and Tac Air have fixed base operator. Uh, facilities in the general aviation, the east side of Epley, okay? And so a lot of companies either have their jet with TAC or they have it with Signature Air. Well, they're going to be buying each other. Uh, They're both way bigger than Omaha, though. Signature Flight Support FBO is a chain of more than 200 locations around the world. And then TAC Air has 16 locations. There are three airports in which the two companies operate. One of those is uh, Epley Airport in Omaha. So it could be interesting. Um, aviation uh, news outlets that reported this said, you know, they may have to divest um, uh, one of those those operations. So it'll be interesting. We could have a different fixed base operator so after that sale goes signature, through. I assume. Well, one would assume if they're the, uh, yeah, the acquirer, unless they're coming up with some other name or something like that. Who knows? But my guess is it would it would stay. And then um, CoStar is kind enough to give us some national real estate news that we kind of like to give you a little national perspective every once in a while. And today we're going to talk about single family home sales in the United States. Get a load of this. New home sales followed the decline of existing home sales in February. Another indicator that buyers might be slowing down as mortgage rates rise. Uh, sales dropped 2% from January and are 6 per- lower than last year. So it's still really wild and crazy in most U.S. markets when it comes time to find a house to buy. But maybe, maybe it won't be quite as wild and crazy. And the average uh, sale price of a home now is $500,000 in the country. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And Omaha um, is a lot lower than that, but way higher than what it was just a year or two ago. So that is your... Uh, Real estate development and economic development news of the week, which is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com. When we come back, Trenton and I are going to talk about um, the best places to work in Omaha and the best big cities to live in in the United States of America. Uh, The city that we're in right now may have made that list. At any rate, you don't want to miss any of this, plus quite a bit more coming up on Grow Omaha. You're listening to the show brought to you by DNM Roofing and NAI NP Dodge Commercial Real Estate. Back in a moment on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Hi, this is Aaron. So I have, uh, I got this list. You can do that. the best places to work thing. Anything else you want to talk about in this segment? Uh, let's we'll see what's Did Rod say we could talk about the new restaurant coming to? I got it on the lightning rail. Okay. Um, but the link he gave us didn't say they were going there. No, it was just, I think it was just about, the about them. So, but yeah, he said $2 million. That, that, that yeah. crank swap. So I've never even tried it. Have you ever tried it? Yeah. How do you differentiate yourself as a as a locally owned China. Chinese restaurant, yeah. You know, I, that's a good question. I mean, um, if you think back, like, in the heyday of, let's see, when you think of the heyday of Imperial Palace, they differentiated by oh, yeah. grandeur. I didn't the think of their name the other day. I was thought the House of Rugs was going to come in there or something, that, or an Asian massage parlor or something, that building. Remember the Koi? Pretty disappointed when that didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, but, but it's weird that that building is torn down. And when it first opened, like late '80s or whenever it was, that was like something that you couldn't believe was in Omaha. Imperial Palace. Yeah, the big one. Now. Oh, they had the little bridges over the koi streams, and uh, I'm thinking it's amazing. This is Joe Cordell. I think I was. I think I was in high school. I so we graduated from high school in '87. I think it opened when we were like in high school. Yeah, or toward the end of when we were in high school. I know when when I was in college, it was like one of the places in Omaha to go. And there would be a horrific wait to get in on Friday and Saturday night. Even though it was a huge restaurant, the Koi. The I remember we you would always have to. You, you always wanted to order off menu, like if you knew the no, Austrian, yeah, no, chicken, no, chicken with the asparagus in it. Yeah. 
peanut butter chicken. And they had several off-menu items, and, like, and then you were cool if you ordered off-menu. And then Mongolian chicken instead of Mongolian oh. beef. And Mongolian chicken, by the way, I think is better than Mongolian beef. Mm-hmm. And I'm a Nebraska who likes beef. Yeah, a lot of times Mongolian beef, even from good Chinese places, and can have a too little tough, a little chewy. chewy. Yeah, a little chewy. Yeah. 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 good, but... Yeah. That Jen's son, Jake Melody, is now... Is oh, of course, on Uncut. Yeah. Oh, okay. But he's, he's at uh, Lane of Oh, yeah. yeah I saw that on there. Yeah. I saw that on their uh, press release. I didn't say I didn't get a press release. Fifteen. And it wasn't a press release. It was like an E blast or something. Okay. Like that. I yeah. They had a picture of everyone. Oh, okay. Yeah. S E I. This is my voice on here. S E I. Can you baseball today? Perform. We do. <clears throat> And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beal sitting next to Trenton Maggot from NAI ND Dodge Commercial Real Estate Company. We're also brought to you by DNM Roofing. By the way, we love those guys. DNM Roofing led quite capably by Eric Obrumt, a really good team of seasoned professionals that have been with Eric for a long time, and uh, they uh, install and fix roofs. But a lot of you who listen to this show either own or make decisions about commercial property. And if that is you, you want to check out DNM Roofing's preventative maintenance program. It is a way of being proactive and in many cases has saved um, uh, building owners quite a bit of money. So you can find them online at dandmroofing.com. Well, Trenton, uh, let's talk about the best places to work yeah. in Omaha. This, um, this comes out every year and uh, it is um, sponsored by Baird Home, a law firm headquartered in the Woodman Tower downtown. And then the program sponsor that, it, that runs it is the Greater Omaha Chamber. So here are the 2022 winners for best places to work in Omaha. And we start with the first category, which would be 25 to 200 employees. So our small to medium sized companies. Number one, Support Works. Number two, they used to be Thrasher, but Thrasher still exists. So, or, or are they well, just Thrasher is a separate part of the business? Yeah, Support Works is, but that's what the I think the Thrasher family came in. Uh huh. Okay, but they expanded. Yeah, but Thrasher still exists yeah. as a separate entity. Okay, um, two Midlands Choice, three Charter West Bank, the power of an eagle. That commercial runs on KFAB. Yeah, Charter West Bank. Four, Bridges Trust, which built that sweet building right on 132nd and West Dodge Road. Pat McNeil built it, but yeah, they're a tenant. Mm. They're a tenant. That's the building that, when you drive by, has the amazing LED light show on the side. And they, and they put the Ukrainian flag on the yeah. side, yeah. By the way, um, we need more of those things in Omaha. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Stuff like that like, livens the city up. I'm sure it wasn't cheap, but uh, it really makes the city look a lot cooler. And the number five, Pattern. I don't know what the heck that is. Pattern? Just called Pattern. Uh, but it's but whatever it is, apparently it's a great place like it to might work. Have been like AccuQuilt or something, but I don't know. It's a it's a great place to work. We know that. Um, now we go to companies with more than two hundred employees. Number one, Fusion Medical Staffing. Number two, we had a lot of medical staffing. Oh, Omaha is a true hub of medical staffing, and so much of it. Medical solutions, triage. Yeah, uh, so much of it goes back to Larry Courtnidge, who founded CNA Industries. Yeah, amazing guy which was um, sold a few years ago to Medical Solutions. But, yes, so much of that basically can be traced back to one guy, uh, Larry Courtnidge, who started that. And then he and his wife, Kathy, and the team built up such a great company. Um, Okay, number two, LRS Healthcare. There's another one. (laughs) So the top two uh, big companies to work are both in uh, medical staffing. Number three, Carson Group. They are the company that is in that new building. Beautiful, brand new six-story headquarters by 144th and West Dodge Road. I want to get a tour of that building sometime. That place is amazing. Number four, FNIC. And number five, Yahoo. Really? Yeah, yeah. So they've gone, it's my understanding they got rid of that. Have they gotten rid of that Oath thing and have gone back to Yahoo for their branding? Was it called Oath? 
Yeah, for a while. It was, it was called Oath or something like that. Well, Facebook is meta, so. Yeah. I got, yeah. You're nothing in the tech world if you don't have multiple names. All right, let's go into um, another kind of fun topic. And this comes from Newsbreak.com. And Newsbreak.com recently created a list. Everyone loves to create lists. Uh, but this one was the best big cities to live in. And uh, they took every city that has more than 200,000 people, and Omaha, with nearly 500,000, would certainly qualify to be on the list, and they picked up their top 50. Now, where do you think Omaha came in? I'll say top five. You're, you're a little too optimistic, but uh, not too, too bad. Okay. Um, number 15. Okay. Number 15. So let me give you, I mean, to, to, to go to that part where Did Omaha they mention is. our radio show? No, but I'm sure it was just an oversight. Okay. They have a really nice, uh, real nice picture of Omaha, kind of the classic. Uh, okay, where the hell is our picture? Uh, wait a minute. Uh um, oh. We moved down? No, we're number 15, but. They gave us the wrong photograph. <laughs> what city is it? You you probably know Pittsburgh. Uh, they 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 uh, printed the Pittsburgh photograph twice. Uh oh. So apparently, um, Omaha is a place where three rivers meet, uh, right by the downtown. So everybody should write into what's the source? Uh, Newsbreak dot com. Let them know that we got shafted. Where the hell is our you know Gene Leahy Mall skyline shot? All right, okay. Well, number fifteen is Omaha. And it says medium home value is 151,000. Well, that's what? that's old. That's uh, real old. Yeah, you can add at least 100,000 or more to that. Um, let's see. It says Nebraska's largest city is anchored by the business of major companies like TD Ameritrade, <clears throat> now Charles Schwab, and Green Plains. The Omaha Zoo and Aquarium is world renowned for featuring the planet's largest indoor desert. Each summer, Omaha brings thousands of tourists and baseball fans by hosting the College World Series. That's what it says about us. Um, interesting. Uh, they didn't even choose the biggest companies in yeah. Omaha. But uh, so, how about a few other cities? Uh, Lincoln was very close to Omaha. They came in at number seventeen. Wow. And. Um, it said the University of Nebraska is a major force in Lincoln, a city that for decades has been home to a large refugee community. The city hosts major events in Nebraska, such as the Cornhusker State Games and is the home to the National Museum of Roller Skating and the American Historical Society of Germans from Russia. Well, that's specialized. They didn't mention Nebraska Cornhuskers football team. No, uh, but they mentioned the Cornhusker State games, by golly. Now, um, what about some other cities? Um, let's see, any other high-ranking cities from this part of the country? Well, number 10 was Minneapolis, Minnesota. I wonder if Kansas City got on there. Yeah, they were down there, like in the 20s uh -oh. or around 30. Um, usually when it comes to those lists, we usually um, beat Kansas City handily. And we're happy to do it. Kansas City's a great town. We always enjoy having. But we have, they're fun competition, though. Yeah, we have fun. We have fun in Kansas City, but they have some issues that we don't, and um, I think they tend to kind of pop up in some of these ratings. But I'll tell you, I mean, I remember 15 years ago and, and before that, taking a, two to three trips a year to Kansas City to to go to P.F. Chang's to go to. Uh, to, to go to Cheesecake Factory and, and the plaza and, and shopping a, and everything. Were you a chain restaurant tourist? Yeah, pretty much. No, but but there's there's we pretty much have everything that they have. You know, we don't have IKEA, but we've got Nebraska Furniture Mart, and they got Nebraska Furniture Mart, but an FM. But um, there's not a lot of reason for Omaha unless there's a concert or there's a sporting event or something like that. Or you just want the nearest uh, decent sized city for a weekender. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Well, let me give you the top five, because everyone wants to know the top five. Okay, so number five, San Francisco, of all places, uh, despite all of the problems. Uh, wow. Obviously, still a lot of great things in San Francisco, so they made it. Number five. Number four, Raleigh, North Carolina. <coughs> Raleigh always ranks yeah. high on everything. Uh, number three, Irvine, California. Suburb of L.A. It's a suburb, but it has 270,000 people. Yeah. It's not a small suburb. Um, number two, another suburb, Plano, Texas, which has almost 300,000 people, like about 290,000 people. The suburb of Plano, Texas, suburb of Dallas. And number one is 
another suburb, Arlington, Virginia. Really? Uh, 232,000 people in that suburb of Washington, D.C. So if you want the best places to live, you want to be in suburban D.C., suburban Dallas, or suburban L.A., or Omaha at number 15. All right. Uh, let's take our middle of the show break, Trenton, and that's where we will share the news with you and and some other information. We'll come back, and when we do, um, as part of our uh, commercial real estate development spotlights brought to you by Nautil Companies, we're going to talk about big stuff happening at Exarban Village, perfect, including two new buildings that are going to be uh, designed for construction here pretty quick. So you're listening to Jeff and Trenton on Grow Omaha, brought to you by NAI NP Dodge Commercial Real Estate and DNM Roofing. Back in a moment on News Radio 1110 KFAB. So I figured um, with a lot of this stuff that they gave us last week, we'll split them into little pieces. But uh, And I was going to split this into a couple, but given that we don't have a guest, I figured we'll just make this the third segment. Because there's a lot of those two buildings that are being announced. And, and it was worked in the not all development spot line into that? Yeah, it'll basically be a section long um, not all spot because there's so much to talk about in this. Remind me to tell you about the movie theater industry after, after the show. Okay. The movie theater industry. Okay. Very good. They're flush with cash. Because of all of the uh, sta- Save Our Stages thing? Yeah, Save Our Stages. And then at the last minute, I guess, I don't know if Schumer or who, but like, um, they added uh, movie theaters into the, the live performance, everything. And they got like 40, 45% of their 2019 or 20 revenues. And so theaters have money to... Hey, people. People that we know. That's good. That's good. I love going to movies. I think a lot of them are turning into more entertainment centers to yeah. get rid of some yeah. screens. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, um, but isn't it weird like video games and like the Dave and Busters and the, the main events and those kind of things are like. People are coming. I only go to Dave and Buster's maybe once every two or three years. But it's a blast. I, it's fun to go there. I like going there. Remind me to tell you also about uh, get people thinking if they were listening to that. Um, Smash Park. Smash what? I know where Smash Park's going, but we can't announce yet. So you just heard that here in Omaha Uncut. We're getting Smash Park. What is Smash Park? It's like pickleball and indoor family fun, and I, I don't know if they have outdoor as well, but um, they're based in Des Moines, and I think they've got a few other cities teed up. But, okay. But they've, they've got one in the Omaha metropolitan area teed up. I think they, they're talking about two or three of them. Oh, I'd never heard of the place. So you just smashed I've heard one of them's uh, like 192nd and Dodge. I think it might be. He wasn't even supposed to say. Now he's saying. See, this is why that's you have a, that's to listen. A, that's a rumor at that point. That's why you have to listen to Uncut. That would be. That would be. Well, I'm not part of the deal, so why not? Um, <laughs> well, then tell the other one. What's the? Uh, <laughs> what do we? What do we call 192nd? Um, Avenue One. Avenue One. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think it's maybe part of that. One there. Yeah. But if you look up a Smash Park in Des Moines, it's big. So is it one of those places where you just smash things like? Uh, no, 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 no. It's it's like pickleball and, and uh, like I, I don't know if it's shuffleboard. It? It's, it's 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 like restaurant. It's, it's like Dave and Buster's, but probably oh, okay. more. So what, are they, what do they call those businesses where you can like break stuff? Yeah, there's there's one like downtown somewhere. Yeah. either that or in Bellevue, where like TV sets stuff. and yeah. you pay to you can bring your own stuff or you they can give you stuff to break and throw things. Remember when David Letterman used to have that uh, spot where he'd say uh, drop things off a five story building and there was this. No, they would drop like a water watermelon yeah. or a TV. Remember, remember when David Letterman he put Alka Seltzer? He had a, a suit yeah, of yeah, Alka Seltzers and like it was drowned in like a tank because like of the the yeah. the fizzy. Uh, I I'm thinking they should have tested uh, they should have tested that one first on a dummy. No animal testing. Yeah, yeah. yeah but they should have tested that one on a dummy just to see. <laughs> yeah. So what was he almost overcome by the carbon dioxide yeah, or something? Whatever it was. <laughs> If we would have just paid attention in Mr. Crampton's uh, chemistry class. I wonder if Mr. Crampton watches that cut, a high school chemistry teacher. Yeah. Uh, we took uh, chemistry without physics, the smart people's version. <laughs> the dumb people's version. <laughs> we had our own element and everything, uh, magabelium. You, you can look on periodic tables, it's an asterisk. Because I can say this because he doesn't watch Uncut, but my son is in high school chemistry right now and he absolutely hates it. And so they have, at his school... Oh, his teacher's not watching. They, uh, 
although he likes the teacher. Um, it's a good save, Jeff. He does. <laughs> Mr. Amper, he likes the teacher. So um, he just hates what the guy teaches. So so he's in this chemistry class, doesn't like it. You know, he's struggling through it and all that. And at his high school, they do a whole year and a semester. So they only take four classes at once, <clears throat> right. but they're a year's worth. And so each quarter is a semester. So when the third quarter ended, that's the end of is the first semester of chemistry. And he was like lobbying. <laughs> He was lobbying to go into the lower level chemistry for the next semester. I said, absolutely not. In the Beals family, we don't take Easter classes. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, except for me, when I was in high school. I said, and you took chemistry I took the lower chemistry class. Does he know that? No, and he doesn't need to know that. I got his phone number. He thinks he thinks his dad took the good chemistry class at West Side in the 80s. That's a way to rear kids is to lie to him. Hey, don't be talking about rearing kids. That's true. No, what a disgusting. <laughs> What about, uh, what do you mean lower chemistry? Like dumb people chemistry. We took yeah. it chemistry without physics. You could take remedial. chemistry. We took the dumb chemistry. Yeah, remedial chemistry. Yeah, but you know, we weren't alone because when we would, once a week we would have that large group class. Yeah. With where, because then you'd break into labs the rest of the week, but you go to that mm -hmm. large group class. It filled the whole auditorium. Really? So yeah, remember that we filled the whole auditorium. Is there so other were, chemistry without physics classes? Oh yeah. Okay. Half the senior class was in the dumb chemistry that we took. <laughs> cool. The best thing about Mr. Crampton was he said that he had to start shopping at the Goodwills and other parts of the city because kids were recognizing their parents' old clothes. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny slide ever. He used to play that up. He used yeah. to always talk about it being on a teacher's salary. He's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, you kids here at Westside all had the 64-pack of crayons. I had the 8-pack. <laughs> built-in sharpener. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you Westside kids have the built-in sharpener. <laughs> Great teacher. Yeah, uh, he and our Facebook friends. Right? Yeah. You're not? I don't know. I'm sure, he's, I'm sure he still likes you, but... Really? Yeah. But Except that time I, I clamped him. You did. Uh, Trenton took, uh, you know those clampers that you'd pick up a hot beaker off a Bunsen burner? One time the teacher was going by when we were in high school and just... He, he, was, teaching a, he was teaching a lab. And, he, and then Trenton just went right behind him with those clampers and clamped his ass cheek. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to do that. Hey, he's still got a good grade in the class. Of course, it yeah. was the lower level chemistry. On a curve. <laughs> but it's true, he did. He clamped his ass. We did not have lower level. All I remember is... I remember the good old days where you could clamp a teacher's ass and get away with it. Yeah, nowadays... It was a good time. Nowadays, nowadays, you would be suspended, possibly expelled, and entered into mental reprogramming. School courses. resource officer <laughs> yeah. would be cuffing, cuffing you and you on the floor. <laughs> Here we go. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals sitting next to Trenton Maggot from NAI NP Dodge Commercial Real Estate Company. That is Omaha's premier real estate company. We do it all. Uh, brokerage, working with landlords and tenants, buyers and sellers. We have a property management division. NP Dodge also has a title company, an insurance brokerage. Uh, yeah, we have people that actually help folks buy and sell houses. Of course, everyone knows that about NP Dodge. We do everything. Yeah, and as Trenton mentioned, you were off mic there, by the way, but we have uh, a corporate reload firm. Any eyes, world famous and very large. Yeah, so all of that at NP Dodge. But NAINP Dodge is the commercial arm of the company. And uh, we help you with office, retail, industrial, land, multifamily, properties, all that kind of good and exciting stuff. Kind of stuff kind of like what we talk about here on Groma. Speaking of commercial real estate, it's time for our commercial real estate development spotlight, which is brought to you by Noddle Companies. Noddle Companies is headquartered right here in Omaha, but they are doing commercial real estate developments all over uh, the nation, really. They also have uh, residential projects that they do, including a couple of residential projects here in Omaha. Omaha, but many of Noddle Company's projects are here in town. Um, the big ones are Exarban Village, uh, Steel Ridge in Papillion, Gretna area, Builders District downtown, River's Edge, the Medical Center campus at uh, Village Point. And next week, we'll talk about uh, Monarch, a big um, project they're doing west of Village Point that's just about ready to get started. But today, 
We've got big news about uh, probably Nautil Company's marquee development of all of them in town, which is Exarban Village. So, Trenton, I'll go through and, and kind of say some of the stuff. And, I mean, we have a, we have a lot here. So, uh, get your pens and pencils ready, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, um, there are new amenities coming to that area outside the inner rail. There's the little... Uh, Dog park. Yeah, there's you know there's that little um, airstream camper thing that's been turned into a bar called Sunny's. So so they call it the Interrail Sunny's area. And um, one of the things you mentioned the dog park, they're they're expanding and improving the dog park, and there's actually going to be a cocktail bar that will serve you while you are playing with your dog in the dog park. Yeah, they're serving growlers. They're uh, very good. And uh, if they don't do that, I'll, I'll be pretty disappointed. But uh, that's that's pretty cool. And that will be opening into the dog park in the next two or three weeks. You know, they're, they're going to serve cocktails, which you'd think they'd, they'd serve dog tails instead of cocktails. Kaboom. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. He's here all week. All of the morning. Kaboom. I need to I need to get that as a little sound yeah, drop thank for interviews. Doctor Demento show. Yeah, <laughs> and then starting on May twentieth, there will be a concert at Sunny's near the inner rail every Friday night all the way through Halloween, and that would be in addition to any of the other shows that are over in Stinson Park. Now, now let's get into some real estate talk about uh, what's happening in the Exarban area. Um, Nautil Companies is working to demise or in other words, divide the remaining retail space on the south side of the uh, HDR headquarters building. Now, if you can picture the north side, Zoop is there. There's a, what is it? Um, uh, Is it Lululemon pop-up? Lululemon pop-up. The uh, Green Belly has a place there. There's a handbag uh, store and a um, kind of florist on the east side. But the south side has been empty. And that is being demised into three spaces. Two of those spaces are spoken for. They are uh, dry goods retail pop-ups. Uh, we don't have the names yet. Uh, we, we we can't give it anticipation. To, we can't give it to. We can't give everything all at once. True. We have to hold some stuff back so people keep listening. But uh, two dry goods retail pop ups will be going into that space, and then the third space is being reserved for a restaurant. And uh, we don't know if a restaurant is imminent there, but uh, it, it will be coming. Also, a little further south, you might remember closer to Spirit World, There's a there used to be a Backwoods store. Yeah, that was a cool store. I'm surprised it didn't make it. So there's a, a tenant committed to the Backwoods space, and we don't have permission yet uh, from the developer to say that tenant. but uh, Not even what it rhymes soon. with. <laughs> Not even what it rhymes with. Uh, 20 questions, right? So here is the uh, the big news. Uh, two buildings planned for Exarban Village. Uh, Nauto Companies is going to start designing and breaking ground late this year or early next year. So the designing this year, but groundbreaking will be either late this year, or early next year on a 150,000 square foot office building where the volleyball courts are currently. They'll be moved somewhere else. Don't worry if you're one of the vol- volleyball players. Seven stories. It's this big building. That's going to be a lot. Of, 150,000 square feet, seven stories, office building. Uh, will look really, really nice. And then right east of that, so still south of the HDR parking garage, uh, but kind of the northwest corner of 64th and Francis, this is going to be a 72-unit apartment building, six stories. and um, We've got height. Those, those will be some very substantive construction projects. They also, um, um, not ready to announce the names of them yet, but have a couple new office tenants going into Exarban Village. Exarban Village is full up. The, the Nautil portfolio, I think they said they have maybe 3,000 square feet left. Tops, yeah. So so that place is getting Even really sublease, full. I heard that uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield had a huge sublease opportunity. I heard that's full, too. Yeah, they've got uh, a yet-to-be-announced sublease tenant, uh, which will be a monster tenant. And then uh, another office tenant going into another one of the buildings. So where the old Gordman space was. Yeah. So when you've got when you have those two office tenants coming in there, and then you start talking about a yet another seven story office building, yet another six story apartment building, a place that's already buzzing is going to be buzzing even more. Absolutely. And then you know the employees are coming back to work at some of those big employers, and and that's that really fills it up. Uh, a couple other things that will be kind of fun in Exarban public events. 
Um, concerts uh, will start every Friday night. We already said that in, in May. And then the concert series in Stinson Park on Saturday night. So the, the outdoor park uh, by Sunny's, their concerts will start in May on Fridays. But then the, the Stinson Park concert series is Saturday night. There will be 12 of those throughout the summer. Um, the Farmer's Market is also coming back to the north side of Center Street. And um, Exarbon has signed a five-year deal with the Summer Arts Festival to have that held there. And then Maha is coming back, the Maha Music Festival. Yeah, they announced the, the lineup. I don't know the names, but that doesn't mean anything because I'm out of the loop. Oh, I'm so out of the loop. And with, with me, if there's live music being performed and I happen to be there, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to like it. But don't tell me, don't ask me to tell you the name of any song or the right. name of any performer because I, I don't know. I hear you. Just not, I, mean, I, I, I know if I like the music, but I, I don't spend any time knowing who sings what. People do that to me all the time. Like, uh, what do you think about never heard of the guy until you mention it. All right. So that is your commercial real estate development spotlight for the week. Brought to you by Noddle Companies, noddlecompanies.com. All right, we're going to take our final break of the hour, and you know what that means. When we come back, it's time for the lightning round, brought to you by Turner Construction. And I'm looking at the list right here, and I see about eight or nine different things, including new restaurants, which everyone wants to know. So stay with us. You're listening to Jeff and Trenton on Grow Omaha, brought to you by NAI, NP Dodge, and d Roofing. Back in a moment on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Hi, this is Eric. <clears throat> Did you like my Russian name, Flip Flop? Uh, you people. Uh, you people. You want to uh, join us for brunch at Lola's? I would love to, but uh, the outlaws are in town. Uh oh. I better go uh, entertain them. So it sounds like something Gary Sotomayor would say. The outlaws? Yeah. I like my outlaws. They're good people. I say the, I say the word outlaw affection. How long in temper? Got here last night. Probably leave around lunch on Sunday. They're on the way back from um, their, their winter in Arizona to the home in Minnesota. This happens to them every year. Um, so... <laughs> They go to Arizona, so they get away, and then they always come back in like late March. And uh, sure enough, for like the eighth year in a row, next week they're supposed to get three or four inches of snow in Minnesota. <laughs> and I always tell them, stay longer. At your house or down in Arizona? Uh, Arizona. Okay. Yeah. Well, now, does your father know he still farms? He still farms. That's why he has to get back. Yeah. They get back for that. He's in his seventies. He's still farming. Every- but uh, I'm like, you st- all of his other friends had retired to stay down there until like mid to late April because in Minnesota, winter lasts another month longer than yeah. it does here. Jeez. And, uh, well, yeah, they go- come back a little bit. Yeah, you can't plant anyway if it's going to start, right? You got to get ready. You got well, you you to you you do stuff to the machinery, whatever it is they do to machinery. Ask him if he's heard of Pivot Bio. Does he grow a lot of corn? He grows a ton of corn. Pivot Bio, that's nitrogen to Oh, this. you did a deal. 110,000 feet? Yeah, 110,000 feet. Um, yeah, he's a classic Midwest grain farmer. It's 50% soybeans, 50% corn. You flip-flop the fields every year. Crop Rotate. rotation. Um, got out of the cattle feeding business when he became a grandpa. Because that was a... That was a Chop did your wife do you cast, do you cast corn? She did this kid. She doesn't anymore. For sure, that lives in West Omaha. <laughs> and welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals and Trenton Maggot here on KFAB, ready to bring you the lightning round brought to you by Turner Construction. Thank you to Turner Construction for making this possible. Um, we are big fans of that company ever since it came to Omaha several years ago to work on the massive Sarpy County Data Center. And by the way, speaking of the massive Sarpy County Data Center, Trenton, when's the last time you drove by um, the the data center on um, Highway 50? Actually, just a couple days ago. It, it that that it's last expand, expanding phase, south, yeah, yeah. If you haven't been by there, there's that phase on the southwest corner of um, Highway 50 and K part. You know, f- the first two phases were the northwest. Phases four and uh, three and four were on the northeast. Now phases five and six are on the the southwest, and they've got this big, huge building going up, but. Quite a bit to the southwest of this building, there's a ravine or a creek that runs through there. They're grading beyond that now when when I was there about a week ago. So wow. uh, 
I don't know if they're going to stop. At any rate, Turner's doing all of that. So when you, when you go by and you see that amazing project, think Turner Construction. Now, for those of you who need to hire a general contractor for some of your projects that might not be quite as big as a multi-billion dollar data center, they do that too. Um, like for instance, a lot of the Chase banks that you see, just those interior build-outs, they'll do projects like that as well. So so from the small to the very huge and everything in between, Turner Construction does it and does an outstanding job of it. All right, so let's get on to it. Trenton, the first thing, we always like to start with restaurants because our listeners are hungry people. Hale Varsity Club plans to open in early May. This is going into the former Ozzy's Roadhouse in Southport West. That's by Cabela's in La Vista. Just uh, uh, down the strip center from your favorite sushi place. Absolutely. Uh, but this is this is the former Ozzy. Did you ever go to that Ozzy's Roadhouse? Yeah, I was. To be honest with you, I wasn't impressed. I understand why they closed. And it, it's it's a great facility but but uh, the consistency wasn't there and hill varsity is like is a local uh, yeah. app or something like that it's a startup so it's 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 co-owned by herdat which is a marketing and um, communications i think high tech firm yep. headquartered here in omaha i think it has roots maybe in lincoln uh, but they're headquartered here in omaha and then hill varsity is an online news outlet that covers husker sports yep and um, so, and I and I don't know this, but I there might be some, there might be some similar ownership there, or or some friendships or something like that, or maybe Hale Varsity might be a client of her dad. Our friend uh, Jack Cohen works there. Okay, well, check uh, talk to Jack and uh, find out the scoop. But this is being described as a one of a kind sports bar, restaurant, and entertainment experience. Brought to you by Hale Varsity and They're probably going to broadcast live from there or something. That'd be cool. I would I imagine they'll do something like that. And I, I would presume also a lot of Husker type stuff and everything like that. Although I don't know if you can, and, and, you know, no offense to anyone, I don't know if any sports car can be, sports bar can be one of a kind. There are so doggone many of them. Right. Uh, but then again, I love sports bars. And so I'm glad to have that one added to the, the local collection. All right. Speaking of sports bars, now let's go to the Tanner's Bar and Grill at 173rd and West Center Road. We, we told you that this was happening a couple months ago. Well, now it has happened. Uh, Capri is an Italian restaurant which has opened inside the Tanners under the same ownership. Um, in fact, uh, the guy who owns that Tanners and Capri also has the Tavern 180 restaurants. Is also the same um, person and entity that's going to be resurrecting the Julio's restaurants. That's awesome. And remember, we said uh, a couple months ago, Julio's will be going to 114th and Dodge and near 192nd and Q, opening later this year. So I have to try this out. I, I have not been there yet, but I'm told it's more, it's not sports bar-y, uh, if, if that's okay. a word. I think it's more I of a sit I wonder if it has the same entrance, because I know it's-, it's No, kinda, south entrance. It is on the south, because it's kind of the back of the building. Yeah, so we, when you enter Tanner's, that's on the, the north side of the building. This yep. Capri has a, a south entrance, but there's a door in between you can pass- you can pass between them. All right, let's keep talking about restaurants. And last week on the show, we told you that Noli's Pizzeria plans to open a location in Regency Landing. Um, that is under construction at I-680 and Pacific Street. Well, that's not all. Noli's is also working on a Gretna location, going to open up later this year in a retail strip near Highway 6 and Shram Road. Of course, the original Noli's is in the Blackstone District. Yeah. And uh, that's that's a good place. That's a good place. No, that's good stuff. Yeah. All right. Um, Did I hear cops pizzas going to Village Point? We heard that as a as a, an unconfirmed rumor. I've been meaning to call them, but um, I don't. I don't. I've heard that from like two or three different people, which means it must be true. Um, but we've heard. Uh, yeah, we'll have to confirm that one for people. Uh, we believe it's going into the Pier One, former Pier One space at Reed, at uh, Village yeah, and Point. And Lake Town Center. I think they're trying to sublease their seventy second and. Uh, what is that, Harney or something location? By the Mart. Yeah. yeah. But we have to find that out for sure. Like I said, we, we've heard it from about three different people. One of the persons we heard it from knows a lot about restaurants, but uh, uh, we'll have to confirm that one. All right. Uh, sad news. Piccolo Pete's didn't make it. Um, Did they give it enough of a chance? I think from from reading a, the, a, the post that they put on Facebook, I think they gave it the chance they could afford to give it. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. So if you're wondering what we're talking about, the original Piccolo Pete's for longtime Omahans, you know this, operated for many, many years, many decades. 
near 20th and Martha. It was one of our family's favorites. I have early childhood memories of, of going there and, and love the place. My dad and I used to go there a lot of times for lunch during the work days, and I could literally go in there and say, I'll take the usual. It was, it was a place because cool. I'd always get the same thing for lunch. And you, you always got to miss a place that closes where you could order the usual. Yeah. At any rate, so the grandson of the founder was going to bring this back, and he did, into a very small space in downtown Papillion. Opened in January. It's already closed. Who knows? I mean, it's tough for restaurants right now, supply chain issues and um, food costs and labor availability. Uh, I never even made it uh, to the new one. But from what I'm told, it was extremely small in there. It couldn't seat very many people. Yeah, economies Um, of scale. You got to have, yeah, you got to. So I don't know. Anyway, uh, sad news on the restaurant. But let's not end on sad news in our restaurant talk. Let's talk about good news. I have never been to this place, but everyone raves about it. Dragon Walk, Chinese restaurant near 142nd and Fort, is going to open another location in Gretna at Nebraska Crossing. They'll go into the Voodoo Taco space. That's possible because Voodoo Taco is expanding into the old Piocracy space. So Voodoo Taco is going to get a lot bigger at Nebraska Crossing. And then this Dragon Walk is going in to the old voodoo space. We got we to gotta try yeah, this. Yeah, that'll be welcome at Nebraska Crossing. They need more food options. Brownie Bar going to Oakview Mall and uh, also at Nebraska Crossing, Pack Sun store opens this Thursday. The music is playing. We're out of here. I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Turner Construction, NAINP Dodge, and DNM Roofing. We'll talk with you again next week right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.